Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall in the last tutorial, what we did was we got to a portion where we cleaned it up a little bit, made our state manager more uh, friendly to programming and a actual good design pattern. And so now when you hit play, you get this screen, which is where we're gonna start doing our drawing. And then when you hit exit, closes the window. So in this tutorial, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be implementing that snake class and just getting the movement up and running. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to say new class snake and this is going to be our snake class and we're going to need a few things. So first what we're going to need is we're going to need a rectangle and then we will say body and we're going to say this is a new array of rectangles and we'll initialize this to like a hundred. And so this is what's going to hold uh, every single body piece of the snake and you'll see how that will work in just a second. And then we're going to need a couple more variables. We'll say double width and height. This will be the width and the height of each snakes, uh, each of the individual body pieces, which will make 24 by 24 since that's the grid size that we have for our background. And then we'll also have a few variables that we can use to keep track of how big the snake is and everything. So we'll have an integer called size, and then we'll have an integer, and this will be the tails index. We'll see what that means in a second. And then we'll have an integer which will represent where the head of the snake is. Okay, so let's use this to just get started with this. So we'll have a constructor and this will take in a size. So how big do we want the snake to be initially? A starting point, so like the start x, starting y. And then we'll need the body width and we'll need the body height. And then we will need and that should be good. We will need one, we'll need a couple more variables as we go along with this too. Um, we'll initialize those as we go along though. So we'll just say this dot size equals size, this dot. Okay, and so the start X and start Y will be used simply to start the uh, body, which will actually hold the position of the snake itself. So we're not actually gonna be storing any X and Y because the X and Y's of the entire snake is gonna be spread out over its entire body. And so what we're going to do is we'll say uh, this dot body width, since we do need this, is, and we just called that width, equals body width. And I'm going to make this a little bit more explicit because I just think it should be explicit. <laughs> this is the body height because this is not the height and width of the snake overall. Okay. And then we'll change this to body width. And then we'll say this dot body height equals body height. Okay, and then we're gonna initialize the array which holds our snake body. So we'll say for int i equals zero until i is less than size i plus plus. So this will loop until we get up to the initial starting size that we want for the snake. Then we'll say rect, rect equals new. We'll call this body piece. Body piece equals a new rectangle. And this is gonna take in the body width, the body height. And then we're gonna say start x plus i times body width start y. So what this is gonna do is it's just gonna increment each body piece. So the first x is gonna start off in one position and then the next x is gonna be one body width to the right, the next x one body width to the right, and the y's are gonna stay the same. So what we should get is a snake on the x-axis that's just three, four, five, however long we set it to. And it's just gonna go like five pieces from the left to the right. And we should see that whenever we code this up. Okay. And then we'll say body I equals the rectangle equals the body piece. <laughs> okay. And then we'll say the head plus plus. And so if we're going to increment the head in here, we should actually initialize it up here to zero. And so we have the tail initialized to zero and the head initialized to zero. And then we're going to do this down here. We're going to say head minus minus. And so what this is going to do is we're going to have the tail at zero, which is where the first piece of our body pieces in the array, and then the head's gonna be at, um, say size was three, the head will be at two, which would be the last index in the array where the head is. I'll do a diagram and stuff in a video, in the next video, which will explain all this in a little bit more detail, just so that we can wrap our minds around this a little bit better. But this is gonna initialize the array for us. Then we're gonna go down and we're gonna create a draw method because we're gonna need to draw this. So let's say public, void draw take in a graphics 2d object and we will import that 
Okay, and then we're going to say for int i equals tail until i does not equal the head, i equals i plus one mod the body dot link. Now, <laughs> this is going to look kind of weird. So, what is this doing? We're saying for int, for i equals the tail, so i is going to start at the tail, we're going to increment i by one until it reaches the head. But there could be a scenario where i actually wraps around. So say the array looks like this. And then there's, so the zeros represent body pieces and the ones represent pieces that are not. And say the tail is right here at this part and this is the head. Then what's going to happen is we're going to want the tail to start here and then we're going to want it to continue to wrap around until it reaches the head and then it's going to stop here. And so what we're saying is this i plus one mod the body length will simply make it so the i goes, oh, this is greater than the array's length. We'll wrap around to zero and then we'll continue until we reach this location, which is the head. And the reason we're doing it this way is because we're actually storing the snake body as something called a singly linked list. And this list will just make it easier to do the movement for the snake. So more detail into that in just a little bit too. Then what we're going to do is we're going to draw each of the body pieces. So we're going to do a little bit of a weird method to do this. Um, so we're going to need the sub width and the sub height. And we're going to do it because if you notice in the original, I'm going to pull it up real quick. The way I had it is each piece sort of has those four little squares. I kind of like that. I saw some pictures when I was Googling what snake looks like and some people did it like this. And so that's how we're going to implement it in this. And we'll simply just break it up into four squares and draw each of those four squares. You can draw it as a single piece if you want. Uh, you can do it just however you want. So in order to do it that way, we're going to need a sub width, a sub height, and we have the X and we have the Y. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to say g2.fill. Well, first we'll set the color <laughs> and we're going to say color.black since the background is white. And then we're going to need to fill four rectangles. So the first rectangle is going to be 2d.double. We're going to say, um, let's, let's get the individual body piece that we're on too. So we'll say rect piece for like the body piece that we're on. And then we'll say body I equals body I. Okay. And then we'll say inside of here, we want this piece is X plus two, which is going to be a buffer for the uh, lines. And then we'll say piece dot Y plus two. And then we're going to do sub width and sub height. And the sub width and the sub height are simply going to be uh, the width and the height, except we're going to have a couple of spaces just that we have those lines going in between them. So we'll say the sub width is equal to the sub, the height or the width, technically it doesn't matter. We'll say the piece dot the width minus six over two. So what that will give us is it'll give us a three pixel uh, gap, which will be one pixel for each of the lines. Um, and then it will give us two pieces that are half the length of the body. Okay. And then double sub height equals, and then we'll say this is the piece dot height minus six over two as well. Okay, and then we do not have this rectangle 2D imported, so I'll import that real quick. Okay, and then we'll say g2.fill new rectangle 2D.double. And then we're going to say piece.x plus 4.0, because this is going to be the one to the top right corner. And then plus the sub width. Then we're going to say piece.y plus 2.0, and then we're going to draw it sub width and sub height. Okay, and then g2.fill new rectangle 2d.double piece.x plus 2.0. This is going to be the bottom left. And then piece.y plus 4.0 plus the sub height. And then we're going to do sub width and the sub height. Then we're going to say g2.fill new rectangle 2d.double. And then we're going to say piece.x plus 4.0 once again. And then we're going to say plus sub width because this is the bottom right corner now. And we're going to say piece.y plus 4.0 plus 
plus sub height. And then we're going to say sub width and sub height. And so what we should get is like four pieces um, that or however, yeah, four pieces for each of the body pieces. And then like just four little rectangles. Let's try this out and just see what it looks like. So inside of the game scene, we're going to initialize our snake. We'll say the snake here. And we'll say snake equals a new snake. It's going to take in the size. We'll start off with five pieces just to see if everything's working right. Start X. We'll do like uh, 48 because that's a multiple of uh, where we want it to be. Start Y. We'll do uh, 48 plus 24. I'm not sure what that is, so I'll just write it in like that. Body width is going to be 24 by 24. Okay. And then inside of our update, we'll just say snake dot draw. G2. And we should actually put this inside of our draw method because updates are not in charge of drawing. Okay, so we'll say snake.draw g2. Let's see what happens. Okay, we'll hit play. And then we get this weird little thing. Let's see what's wrong real quick. Okay, so I did some debugging and the problem is actually quite simple. Inside of this, I just passed in these parameters backwards. So it should be x, y, and then width, height. And what I was doing was width, height, and then x, y. So we'll just flip the body width and the body height around up here. And then if we do this one more time, hit play. There we go. So you see we get one, two, three, four pieces. And then let's increase that just to see if it works with more. So we'll go to the game scene. And we will say, where is it? Uh, up here. We'll change this to 10. So we should get 10 pieces. And we'll hit play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like we're almost there. It looks like uh, if we just add in an equal sign here, it will actually initialize it to the appropriate size. Hit play one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So now we get it. And they're all drawn right. And it looks like we have a snake on the screen. And we are ready to start the next piece. Before I go any further, I'm going to do some drawing and just explain what's going on because I feel like I did a poor job explaining it as we were going through the code and it'll be a lot easier to visualize. So let's go do that real quick. Okay, guys, so let me explain why I was doing everything so very strange. You might think, why were we doing the for loop very weird and why are we storing it so weird and everything? So basically what we want our snake to be is something called the singly linked list, as I mentioned before, because if we look at the snake body, it looks like this and it's just these squares that are attached to each other and then when it moves down one say what we actually want to do is we want to pick up this piece and move it down to here and then we just take it out from here that way we get that trailing effect where the body pieces just sort of trail along behind it they, they just sort of follow the snake as it goes and go sort of in that weird pattern that you get and so in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to store these pieces um, in a manner that looks like this. So we have like this piece, and then the next piece is here, and then the next piece is here, and then the next piece is down here. And so the simplest way to do this in Java is just to have an array. So we have this array full of all these pieces, which I represented in the code with these ones and zeros. So like say, that these are just pieces and a one represents a piece and a zero represents no piece. And so what we could have is um, we have this array of full of pieces and we can literally pick up this piece and we'll say move it to here and then we'll put it here and then that will actually move the entire snake just like we demonstrated right here. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to have this array that will be rotating. So we'll have like say three body pieces here three zeros, then in the next frame or the next time the snake moves, it will look like this. And then in the next frame, it will look like this. And so on and so forth. And then once it reaches the end of the array, it will wrap around to the beginning and continue to do the same thing. And this will give us that look that we want where the snake just sort of follows along. And so we're literally going to be just implementing that in the array. and as these pieces move around, um, we'll move the X and the Y's inside of the pieces respectively. But in order to get this array pattern, what we need to do is we need to come up with some sort of pattern that can say start here and end here. Or if you're in a weird case uh, like this one, like say start here 
and then we want it to end here. And so in order to do that, we need to use this uh, operator called the modulus. So basically, if this is the length of the array, we'll just say length, and it contains this, uh, we can get, we can simply like add one and wrap around by saying i plus one modulus the length of the array. And then we would wrap these in parentheses. And so all this does is say like, if i is zero, then we would get zero plus one modulus length, which just gives us one, which, so say i is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then we would get, so i is right here right now, and this is actually be six in the array, so we'll say six plus one modulus, the length of the array, which is seven, six plus one is seven, seven divided by seven is one, with a remainder of zero. So then I would become this remainder, which is zero, and it would wrap around to the beginning of the array. And then that's how we get that wraparound effect and why we have that for loop, which is very strange. And then I'm going to go over real quick to the drawing method we're using to draw those squares, because I just think it'll be a little bit easier to visualize that as well. Okay, for the squares, it's actually a little bit simpler. Um, we basically just say we have one square like this, and we want to break it up into a square up here, a square right here, a square right here, and a square right here. But we want this dividing line in between, and we want a little bit of a pixel gap around. So all I did there was, um, if you notice, we have one, two, three pixels there, one, two, three pixels there for a three pixel gap. And so in order to get that correct, what we need to do, because we also need to account the next piece would be right here. And um, so I made this a two pixel gap, two pixel gap, two pixel gap, which gives us six pixels that we're going to need in buffer space. So then if this is w for the width and this is h for the height then each of these squares is going to be the width over two except not quite the width over two it's actually going to be the width minus six buffer pixels over two and then this is going to be the height minus six buffer pixels over two that way we get those pixels in between and those pixels separating the squares. So say we want to get the X and Y of each of those coordinates. If we just draw it out a little bit bigger right here, uh, we can see where this is going. Uh, this X and Y are actually really simple. So typically it would be zero, zero, but we need this uh, little pixel gap. So it would actually become uh, two, two, since Plus, plus whatever the x position is. So this would be 2, 2 relative to this whole square's overall x, y coordinate. Then to get, um, and then the width and the height would just be this sub width and this sub height. Okay? And then this guy's x and y would be, so the x would be whatever the current x is, plus whatever the sub width is, plus we have two pixels here and then we have two pixels here so we would get four and then we would draw it with a sub width and a sub height and then it's y would be simple it would just be the y of whatever the uh, x coordinate is plus two so just the same y as it is up here then this guy would be x plus two so whatever the x coordinate is plus two the y would be y plus the sub height plus four since we have two pixels here, two pixels here. And then this one would just be uh, this X and this Y. So we would just add those together and then we would get this guy's X and Y coordinate. And so then that's how we get that cool little four square routine shape, okay? I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Um, we went over drawing the snake and sort of the data structure that we'll be using for the snake. In the next episode, we'll see really clearly how that data structure helps us with movement. So. The next episode, we'll go over how to move the snake and make that little jittery movement and the following movement. So I'll see you in the next video. If you like this, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.